this video, I want to show you how you can easily do what if analysis in Power BI. I came up with this topic a few years ago when I worked for a consultancy and there all the consultants needed to be billable. So that means that, for example, 70% of the hours we needed to write on clients and working there and like 30% of the time we could spend on personal development, training, these kind of things. And we used a system that provided us with all of that data, but it was just like hours planned, hours spent and the percentage, a little bit like we can see in this example where you could see, for example, Amanda was 70% billable in January, but in May it was 50%. And for one employee, two, three or four, that's easy to see. But what if you have 20 or 30 and you want to see, are they billable enough? Yes or no. But also, would it make sense if we say everyone needs to be 75% billable or is 70% billable just too high? And then if we know the value we want, what would be the impact on, for example, the hours that the employees have to work? Because you have this whole scenario, like what if this would be the case, then everything else would change. And I want to see that. So in Power BI, you can easily do that. So that's the good news. You can use numeric range parameters and then use them in a visual or for conditional formatting and do that what if analysis. So for example, here I have overview billable as expected and at the top we have the table that I showed you before but now we can fill in with a numeric parameter what we expect and you see that my visual adjusts accordingly which means that I can play around like what would a certain scenario mean for me my employees and how much they work so you see this is really dynamic and it's all done with numeric range parameters. It's built in Power BI and I'm going to show you how to do that. So here we are in the Power BI report I just showed you before. Like you can see, if I adjust this to 60%, for example, we can now see that these are the hours the employees would need to work extra to meet that in these months that they don't meet the expectations. But how do I get this field where I can actually put in some numbers and everything else adjusts accordingly? you go to modeling and there you have new parameter. If we click on numeric range, we get a pop-up window that asks us, what do we want to do? It's a numeric range. If we clicked on the wrong one, we could change that here uh, and set it to the one that we wanted. Then the name, how do we want to name it? We could call this HR target or consultancy target. You can give your parameter a name that makes sense because what happens when we create this parameter, there will be an extra table created in Power BI with all that information in that we put in here. I will show you that the moment we clicked on create. And then we get asked, what is the data type? Is it the whole number, decimal number, fixed decimal number? I want here whole numbers from one to 100. You could also say decimal number from zero to one because we're working with percentages. It really depends on also how you want to write the docs afterwards. I will go with whole number and I say minimum is one, maximum is 100, 100% billable. Increment should be one. You could also choose 0 0.5 or two or 10. That really depends on how much choices you also want to give your end users that are using that report. And we can give it a default value, which means if nothing would be selected that would be this value but you also can keep this empty and then you can say add slicer to this page and if i would click on create this would actually create a new table if i go to table view and here we see the new table hr billable parameter that's how i called it in the end and it goes from zero to 100 and if i click on this we see here this is the name of our table and what it does it generates a series from 0 to 100 and the increment is 1. So if you clicked something wrong and you want this to be 2 so steps of 2 you could still click on that here and you see automatically this also changes. Put it back on one and we see the parameter value that's what you're going to use in all your dax measures very basic very easy to use so now that is created we can go to our report view again and this is the slicer that was added to my report i can reset all settings to default to show you how it would look like when power bi puts it just on report then it looks like this and what i did is i went to the slicer settings. I said, I do not want a slider. I don't want a title because I want to put it in there. So I do a lot of formatting actually to make that work. Then I put it in my report, but this will not automatically work because now you would have, for example, the table 
where you have your employees the month and how billable they are and you would have that slicer but just putting that slicer somewhere does not have any effect on anything because the table is also not related to anything so you need to tell power bi what it can do with that parameter so in my case i created the same table as above and i want to show visually if any of these employees is billable above what i fill in in the parameter then it should be colored green this field and it's just a matrix visual and if it's not hit i want it to be white because then you can easily see when did we hit the target yes or no and how do i do that if we go in our matrix visual to the format pane so click on the visual go to the format pane and then you say cell elements in the format pane i can choose the background color and the font color so I click on background color and font color. And then you already see Power BI automatically creates kind of a heat map. Of, and this is not exactly what I want. So I can use conditional formatting. And now I could say, for example, lowest value is white and highest value is blue. But I want these values to be based on my parameter. So it needs to be a field value. And a field value is actually a DAX measure. This is the DAX measure I created. It's parameter slicer color. And I say if my sum of percentage billable, so Amanda is for example 70% billable in January, is lower or equal to my parameter divided by 100, then I want this color and this is white and this is a hex code. Otherwise, I want another hex code that I have in the table, but to make this easier to understand, I put in a second hex code and this is the green color you see in my report. So we actually create a DAX measure that helps us to determine is what we see here lower or higher than what we fill in our parameter and color it accordingly. So if I now go to my matrix, go to the format pane, cell elements, background color, I say field value and then I search for the field we created. I name it parameter slicer color, click on it. And now we need to do the same for font color. So it's the same color. So now if I would put in here 60, you see it colors accordingly. And then I removed all kinds of borders and stuff to make it look like this. So that's how you can use the parameter with conditional formatting, but you can also of course use it in other measures. For example, in this visual that we see here, I want to show per month how many hours are still available per employee based on that target, based on being, for example, 70% billable. What would that mean? How many hours would these consultants have left to spend? And to do that, I created a DAX measure, hours available. And here I created a variable where I say, this is our budget. So the hours each consultant has available. And I want to multiply that with the percentage that we fill in here. So that is our target. These are the hours that we think, according to the parameter that we fill in, someone should be billable. And then in the return statement, it's just a basic if statement where I say if someone has his target 20 hours and the numbers that someone is planned, so for example, 20 hours is zero or lower, then it should be planned because then they hit the target. Otherwise, I want to see the target. So if someone is only planned 15 hours, I want to see that. So that would be five. So there we use our parameter just in a DAX measure. And every time you fill in something, all the measures will be according to that. So you are adding actually some extra flexibility to your report, which makes it very easy to make this what if analysis. You don't have to edit your original data. You can just use these parameters.